I don't do the most, but I do a lot. I'ma make a toast, cause we still alive. No big, I feel like pop. Super shit. I went there, the doctor was like, I was crying so much. 
And then he was like, mm -hmm. I canceled your appointment. And that's the day I, I was like, I really want this kid, regardless of what anyone said. So I had the kid, and it wasn't a fairy tale afterwards. I, I you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to teach right after a month. I was peeing my pants, yeah. I was in Chicago this one time, and I was like, everyone, I'm peeing right now. And they were laughing, but I was like, no, I'm really peeing my pants. I'm dancing right now. I'm wearing a diaper. But, you know, I was going in, and I actually booked a huge job. I learned, every, learned the whole 90 minutes of choreo. Went on stage third day, and I got fired for being too fat. You know what I'm saying? But because of all that, my kid, like looking at her, even though I was really sad, I didn't have a real personal life. Like I'm talking about, like what I was used to, yeah. you know, in the industry yeah. and stuff like that. It broke me down as a person, and it made me realize, like, like it, she gave me the biggest in life, in my career, in everything, like how I do anything. She is the reason that I needed to change to become better. So my personal life is to make to make sure I become a good role model for her and other females and other people out there. Because when I book people on jobs, I don't want them to feel fat, ugly, this, and this, and this. I just want to see the way you dance yeah. and see your intention. That's me. So <coughs> I know it's on a tangent, but a lot of girls ask me, how do you do this, having a kid? And I'm like, I work the best job in the world after my kid. Yeah. He has kids. Like, it just gives you this push that's not about you, you know? So I prefer not to go out. I, if I have to go to an event, yeah, I prefer to be, to be the best I can for her and other people every day now. I get to see it, you know? And so that's how I balance it. It's like I'm really picking and choosing what's beneficial for her future and mine and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, what was it like teaching your first class? And can you describe or do you remember the moment you re realized you had a platform to inspire others? <laughs> well, I, I taught in SF. I would always teach at uh, West, 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 so here's a step. They just asked me to teach choreo. Now I didn't even know what choreo was. But it started here. But can I show you? My first job was in Norway. Can I tell you the story? Go for it. So I was teaching. That's like my first time ever teaching internationally. And I was teaching Rocco, Aaliyah, and her school. That's like you're all before. And you got like come up from your back, like roll down with your booty. I was like coming up. And I was like, and I farted. <laughs> and I was telling my class to be so sexy, and I actually farted. <laughs> and then the whole class was laughing. So that was my first time. You are wild. You are so wild. I'm a girl. So that's my first experience. <laughs> I tell, I tell everyone that story. I just think it's funny. Um, which goes to like why I teach is because of that. Is because of those moments. I mean, whether it's a fart or being on on a stage in front of thousands, it, it's just like or teaching y'all. You know, like, it's that feeling of being able to give, like you said. Like I really was asking myself, like mm, it seems like everywhere I go, I get into really deep. deep Conversations with at least one or two folks around the world, my hometown, wherever. And that's enough for me to keep going. Honestly, I, I mean, like I keep saying, I thank God for the jobs that I have been given. And I, I'm utilizing that within my work. But the honest truth is that what keeps me going in this game is choreography giving these new guys. Like, Talking to each other, conversing, getting to know each other, like telling me what's wrong with you and this and this, and I could try, you know, because I'm old. So, you know, like things like that. It's just human interaction and purpose. 
and that's that's what it's all about at the end of the day. It's like, well, dance can really take you there. Is to get connected with people, and I think that, that is one of the yeah, that's it. <laughs> all right, so it's gonna be the last round. Um, it's an open question for all of you guys. How would you describe your style and how did you develop it? Ooh. <laughs> Imagine me his age, okay? I was watching Little Mermaid and Madonna Paris live tour. Um, VHS tape because my mom liked her a lot. So it was either Madonna, Little Mermaid. So that's what stuck as like an eight year old kid. And I started teaching, like, I was like, what is this running man? Like, I don't know how I even got the running man. I got the running man at around like 10. <laughs> and so I taught my grandfather the running man. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, my mom was getting, like, her license for hair cutting. So she would, like, be at the salon very late. So I remember going to downtown. I used to be there waiting, like, waiting with her. Her friend Naima, I will never forget. She's like, I heard you like to dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> like, do you know how to do the butterfly? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like the butterfly. And then that's how I started. <laughs> like dance. That's my style. Like it's really weird. Like I didn't grow. I didn't grow up from choreographers. I actually grew from music. So it's weird because I grew from Madonna. You know what I'm saying? And then it went to like uh, new kids on the block. I had to <laughs> like it. And then honestly, like like hyphy music, the roots, common, and then it into like rage against the machine, garbage, <laughs> uh, no doubt, and then into like hella hyphy. <laughs> but a bunch of like I hated that song too. I just dig it through some of it. Uh, so that's why like and when I grew up I learned from music videos, like, at, right after school, me and my friend Madonna, we used to go to her, I think her name is Madonna. Oh, yeah, so we would go to her house and we'll play uh, Donkey Kong and we'll watch CMC, Channel 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we would be like, this, there's a, remember Maya? Yeah. Maya, like, yeah. <laughs> we'd be in her room. Being like, how should you do that? I don't know, you do it. She's like, this, like, okay. So that's how I lost her learning. Was like running home, watching CMC, Chewy Gomez, and trying to do all those dance moves from the butterfly to Naima. You know, and then like pretending I'm Madonna, but then mosh pitting. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Skater face, had short hair, big clothes. Do you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I the way I grew up is my style. I can't explain it. It's like I love all types of music and I kicked it with different folks. And then when I was with uh, Culture Shock Oakland and like uh, hey. uh, Future Shock SF, hey. that's where I met Mind Tricks, which is Jabberwockies today, and then Woo. like Gary Kindle. Uh, you know, and then like Dorel, like it's like, all oh, Darnell, whatever his name was. <laughs> you know, him too. Him too. He, he's a big part of his want to dance, and that bunch of house parties. Hey. It, it is just, I have to say, it's life. Life taught me who I, who I am in dance, so I can't pinpoint one style. What I'm trying to say is, I work backwards. Feelings first, then. Uh, taking like broccoli, house, grooves, um, <laughs> capoeira, I took all that stuff, you know? I, I love all of it, except for that thing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>